All right, I feel so much better now. Amen. Y'all going to have to invest in one or learn exactly what to do. Uh, Shabak, we have visitors tonight, and I'm glad. No, come on. Let's salute. Elder, he's now elder and living in Baltimore, but he is a son of this church since he was born. Elder Isaiah Mixon has invited two guests. Can we clap for Elder Mixon? And both of them are from the city of Orlando, and I want y'all to get excited for them. One is a prophetess, prophetess Carolyn Jimson. Where are you? So we can acknowledge you. Where are you, prophetess Carolyn? All right, stand on and get your props, baby. Amen. And then another one is Miss Audrey Bellamy. Where's Audrey? Audrey, God bless you. Now I need louder screams for this person. They watch us, they watch us on YouTube. They live in Daytona Beach. They are an, a faithful e-member, hear me, and they are so attached to the ministry that they're making plans now to move the Central Florida area to be closer to the 1403. Miss Samantha Johnson, where are you? Samantha Johnson, stand, thank you, so we can thank God for you. I'm excited about people. None of you have to duck being seen. We all ain't always at our best on a Wednesday, okay? So don't go around using them apps looking pretty 24 seven. Just be yourself so that you don't shock nobody in reality, amen? This is me as a prophet, as a man, this is who I am. And people have to learn to start loving you for who you are. If you can handle people for who they are, clap for who's next to you right now in Jesus' name. We're appreciative to have an executive pastor who is qualified to teach and preach the word of God. And tonight on a rare occasion, our associate pastor is present with us. Pastor Jay, Pastor Joseph Hope. Sing your fathers with us this evening. We love him. Our assistant pastor is present. We love him. Most of all, we thank God for Jesus Christ. He is present. I almost started to sing, but we're in Bible study. I want to remind you about Friday, do we have that flyer posted? Can we put it up there? I need everyone that can to go with me on Friday. I wanna be a blessing to this woman of God. When you lose your husband, I don't hear y'all talking. Well, some of you ain't gonna know it because number one, you ain't got a boyfriend, but when you lose your husband, some of you lose your mind off of losing a boyfriend. But when you have a great man of God who been with you over 40, 50 years and God calls them home and then they transition the church to you as if y'all don't feel me, the women should be talking. It's hard, it's hard for a woman to pastor after a man's had the helm, just like it's gonna be hard for a woman to be president. I know y'all don't believe me. And I've got 200 prophets that's been texting me who gonna be the president. Half of them say it's Trump, half say Harris. So half of them ain't hearing from God at all. So I don't know what's going on. All right, I don't even think God gets into politics unless he's concerned about delivering people. All right, y'all, every time God chose a leader, he assigned them to a group of people. I want my church talking and he said, tell Pharaoh, not let all of the people go. My. And when you want to see your stats change, the Bible said, if my people. So y'all stop thinking that God is concerned about all of this. 
America ain't even in the Bible. That's all Eastern and we live Western, but God is the God of the whole universe. So he's our God, but don't get so deep that you let the creeps freak you out. Amen. Study to show thyself approved. I don't hear nobody. A workman needing not to be ashamed is rightly. Somebody shout rightly. Rightly dividing the word of truth. I did tell the whole world last year, I said President Biden will bail. And Vice President Harris will run for president. I made that very known. If God tells me everything like who gonna win games and what the lottery number is, I'm going to hell rich. I don't want God to give me all that power. Touch somebody and tell them, you don't know what to do with the power you have. Yeah, you don't need no more power until you learn how to cultivate and isolate, insulate the power that you possess right now. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, we've been talking about faith. We've been talking about faith. We've already, even Sir Montez said it, and I enjoyed that these young adults are listening. We have, ki we have coined the phrase, faith is a walk in the dark. Will you tell your neighbor who's sitting so close to you but didn't say hi to you yet? Faith is a walk in the dark. When I go to the Euro European Caucasian church, they talk to each other the whole service. They talk to black people through the whole service. When you put black people near black people, it's like a wall is up. Y'all pull down that wall. But we've been talking about faith, and I think this one will be one of the most intellectual discussions. Let me ask you who have gone to school for a length of time, have you graduated high school? Raise your hands. Graduated with, okay, put them down. If you have an associate's degree or been to a two-year college and graduated, raise your hand. Some of y'all lying, but raise it. I know you're lying because you can't speak well. I know you're lying. Put your hands down. If you've gotten a bachelor's or a master's degree, raise your hand. Not a fake one paid for online. I'm talking about in a school. Three of you are still lying. Put your hands down. See, you can't be a member of this church and lie. If you have acquired anything past a master's degree, raise your hand. Clap for them, because this is excellent. The reason why I took this particular survey is I need to know how far I'm going to go. Because the word of God must be grasped by all ages. All right? And I'm trying to take our midweek to another level. If you are unemployed, raise your hand. Unemployed. That means, all right, so that means the five that's unemployed, the, all of you got jobs. Yeah, okay, you're lying. Now, two, if you own your own business and it's lucrative, raise your hand. You may put your hands down. If you are retired, raise your hand. Let's clap for the retired people because that works. If you have faith one day to employ someone without hurting yourself, raise your hand. I said one day. 
and hear the whole situation without hurting yourself. All right, thank you. I want to try to get you there. You that clapped, I appreciate you, but I want to try to get you there. Most folk charge for some of the stuff we give you, but you get it free because we your pastor, not your slave. We are your pastor. And God just so happened to allow some of us to achieve certain degrees and go through certain experiences, never knowing why until we were situated in a place like this. I want you to look at someone and begin my Bible study by telling them, you are my way out of this. Some of you can't get out of what you're in because you won't talk to other people who might be your blueprint. Back in the day, your road map out of this well I know he had cancer I had cancer but he make it seem like I shouldn't be hurt he don't know what kind of cancer I have that's dumb for you to protect the disease it's not intelligent when you protect the problem and insult the answer look at someone else that ain't cocky and tell them I may be your way out of what you're in Joshua chapter 2, verse 7 through 10. I'm going to read the King James Version, but then I'm going to read. They may not have this. It's not their fault. It's called the Easy Read Version. I'm only going to read that from this chapter. Then we'll stay in the King James for the rest of the evening. Church, say amen. amen. Joshua chapter 2, verse 7 through 10. And the men pursued after them the way to the Jordan unto the forts. And as soon as they which pursued after the men were going out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto the men who were upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is falling upon us. And that all inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Joshua 2 verse 7 through 10. Verse 10. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. Not for everyone. For you. Look at somebody and tell them God's doing something for me. And tell them don't get jealous when it's done. Because tell them what he does for me. I have the option to do it for you. All right, I just want you to know. We started out by saying, I may be your way out of this. Young adults, push me tonight. We have heard how the Lord, the top of verse 10, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water. Thank you, Elder Curry, for stepping in of the Red Sea and all musicians taking the place of some of ours who had to go to Miami and Fort Lauderdale. I appreciate y'all. The water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings, right? Of the what? And, and on the side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, who ye utterly destroyed. Want to read that in the Easy Read version. Easy Read says, so the king's men went out of the city and the people closed the city gates. This is my reason for reading it coming up. The king's men went to look for the two men from Israel. They went, underscore, to the Jordan River and looked at all the places where people crossed that river. See, you didn't read it because you stuck with the fords of Jordan crossing and you never understood that these are not the first people to cross. Oh, y'all, see, you taught it like the miracle was they crossed the Jordan. That is a miracle, but they're not the first because the enemy went looking for them at the Jordan where they could cross, which means the enemy knows your route before you do. All right, I just, I just lost everybody. The enemy knows what route you're supposed to take 
but God is so good that he stopped you before you could take it. Because if you would have got there as fast as you wanted to, a demon, a devil, a foul spirit would have devoured you. Now, all of you should be excited about this because your sickness is not a sickness, it's a stop. Him cheating was not to hurt you. It's God saying it's the wrong person. Everything bad that's happening to you is not a demon, but it is a reason. And your prayer should not be heal or help me. It should be, Lord, what's going on for real? Because you know I love you and I'm living better than I've ever lived. And I pay my tithe and offering. I'm a member of anointed church. What's really going on? behind the scenes why is all of this out of nowhere and why is all of this I wish I could teach happening to one church this church must be awesome powerful and anointed for the devil to keep visiting one ministry thinking oh y'all ain't talking putting you in situations you actually have nothing to do with and using you as their way out Wherever there's the presence of a devil, there's also a God trying to take you somewhere. And I'm going to keep looking at a lot of you as I'm teaching. Verse 8 of that easy read says, The two men were ready for sleep and Rahab went to the roof to talk to them. She said, I know that the Lord has given the land to your people. You frighten us. I need to say this by faith and hope four of you jump up out of a hundred and whatever's here, but you got to be serious. Some people are disconnecting from you, not because they're mad, they're scared. Your entire situation threatens them because they don't understand how you're functioning, how you're succeeding, how you're not crying, how you're still loving, how are you still being nice when you should be rude? They don't understand your flow. Now you that are gonna sit and make it seem like I'm not teaching, you go ahead and enjoy yourself. He said, you frighten us. Everyone living in this country is afraid of you. Verse 10, last verse. We are afraid because we have heard about the ways that the Lord has helped you. We're not afraid of you. We're afraid of you because it seems like God supports everything you put your hands to do. And it's not because you're super holy. It's because you're faithful. My holiness don't look up to thee. My faith looks up. All right. Thou lamb of Calvary. Sometimes where you're not living right, you can still walk right. And that's a conundrum. That's a statement that could juxtapose itself. It can look like an oxymoron. It can look paradoxical. But we're going to help you. What level are you teaching on tonight, Bishop? The associate's degree. All of y'all can get this. You graduated high school, that's the next level. You went to a two-year college, that is a greater high school. We are afraid because we've heard the ways of the Lord or that the way that the Lord has helped you. We heard that he dried up the Red Sea when you came out of Egypt. We also heard, y'all missing it, that you did what you did to these kings. We heard how you destroyed those kings living east of the Jordan River. Remember... We're about to go to chapter three to teach you how to cross over. I'm going to use the words cross over in the text 
But for the Bible study, for two folk who would get a quick jump as if you're sanctified, I want you to hear the words, get over it. So when I say something like crossover, I don't hear, I want you to hear the words, get over. Don't get over on people, get over what you're going through. Don't try to get over on people. Folk who get over on people only use them for what they need them for and then they're discarded. And that hurts more than anything in the world that you can take out of my hand but not out of my heart. You understand? That, all right, I'll leave that alone. Remember what I told you, some, certain things you ought to be jotting down these are the things, Elder Troy, that I really want to be captured and captivated and wisely depicted of who I am because I'm more than a shake your neighbor's hand. I'm more than that. I went to school for over 12 years. I love my black job. Oh, y'all didn't catch that either, huh? So I wanted you to understand from chapter 2 that the enemy knows where to find you but God won't let you get there. And the issue is if two people catch this because I'm going to preach it Sunday but if two people catch this I will so carefully give God the praise and give you honor and that is while you weren't where you wanted to be you were hidden at the top. You were still here. Some of you are not frustrated that you're up there. You're frustrated that you've not been exposed. Even though you're better than most people that are at the top, the devil's not after them. Let them get paid while you get an experience that's going to make you paying others. Wherever God's taking you, he's going to qualify you not to get paid, but to be in a place financially to pay others. You that clap, may thousands and hundreds of thousands fall upon your life. White people would have been like, yes, brother, yes, say it again. That's why y'all broke. You don't know how to respond. Somebody give you something, you ought to say thank you more than once. You ought to call them the next day. I just want to thank you again. But black people take people for granted. Once you give them easy access, they lose the respect that they should have. Then they start hanging out with other disrespectful people. Because they don't respect each other. They have familiarity in situations. So the hurt hang with the hurt. Divorce hang with divorce. Liars hang with liars. But when you are serving God the right way, you make sure that you avoid certain groups because I want a friend up. When I say friend up, I want to be around people that have more than me and not be intimidated and learn how to acquiesce to their success and ask them, how can I get on? Look somebody, first tell them, get over yourself. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. He or she may have more, they may have better house, but they ain't better than me. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Because folk who have achieved the right way struggle to be where they are. So don't try to put them on your level. You were not there for their struggle. Look somebody and tell them, get over yourself. Here, yeah, get over yourself. Learn to compliment people who have come 
over their Jordans. So that was before they crossed the Jordan because in chapter 2, for those talking to me, they were stuck on the other side contemplating whether they wanted to cross. And I'll tell you why. We in Bible study, and y'all should eat this, simply because everyone who crossed the Red Sea actually never made it over the Jordan. A whole generation died from complaining. So they had no role models. Oh yeah, so they got where they are on their own and they've never seen anybody else do it. They've never seen it done in their generation. So why in the world should I be the first to try something that has never been done? Now I wish some of the older saints in here, 50, 60, 70, possibly 80 would talk because we did a poor job at showing them how to cross over. We just told them, if God did it for me, he'll do it for you. No, no. This generation can't be told. They got to be showed. But let me leave. They cannot be told. And they are not demonic because they got questions. They have questions because they've never seen it done on this manner. And you did not properly introduce them to the faith. You introduced them to how your mama raised you, what your father told you, and most of them weren't saved. You didn't introduce them to the faith. Genesis chapter 3 verses 4 through 7. I'm sorry, Joshua chapter 3 verses 4 through 7. All of it is King James now, all of it. Joshua chapter 3, 4 through 7. Let's build it. Let's, let's construct this little skeleton. Let's put some flesh on it. Then let's breathe into it so it can become livable. Yet there shall be a space between you and it. The space is about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it that ye may know the way in which you must go. Underscore this for those who will get excited, for you have never passed this way before. Which means I'm gonna help you do things in a way that I've never allowed anyone else to ever do it. That's why folk think you crazy, cause you're taking a route that they've never seen taken before. How you gonna get married to somebody and you ain't date? That's gonna happen too. you gonna buy a house and you ain't even got a job that's going to happen too God is about to do some things in a way that we have never seen it done before and some of you ain't clapping I don't want a house without a job then stay in your apartment but the Bible says uh, you shall live in houses and if, and just and let me keep it Bible if he can let someone else build it why can't he let someone pay for it just because you had to pay for yours don't hate on who may not have to pay bishop you're making folk lazy no i'm not making them a slave like you god said my yoke is easy and he said, if a man walk up right before me. Oh, y'all see there's so many. Then he said, no good thing will I withhold from them. I can quote so many scriptures to deflate your personal ego. God was not in your hard work. You work hard because God wasn't in it. God was not in your hard work. We were raised by our parents like I was to work for everything you have. And I enjoyed accomplishing what I did. But if I had to do it again at this age, I don't have the strength to put in all that work. And there are 50, 60, 70 year olds that don't own a house, don't own a car, don't have no money. I'm telling you, there are old people who are not successful.
I thought my pastors would be talking to me, but it's okay. Because I'm coming down your street. You have never passed this way here to for, which means before or ever up until now. Joshua said to the people, what Prophet Hall, Bishop Hall, Pop, whatever y'all call me, saying to this church, sanctify yourselves. And the quicker you do that, the quicker you receive for tomorrow. I'm going to preach this Sunday, I promise. The Lord will do wonders among you. Which means God can do everything he promised in 24 hours. The thing is, your faith does not measure up. That word sanctify in the actual Greek for one talker means to get away from certain people. It means to set yourself apart. Has nothing to do with holy. Tongue speaking, quickening. It has to do with you discerning who's for you and who's not. And everybody's on your side when they broke and need you. Sanctify yourself, Elder Jackson, for tomorrow the Lord will work wonders among you. Verse 6 and 7, Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, which is a visible representation of God's presence. What the order is for three folk, not to the followers, but to the preachers. To the followers is sanctify yourself and get ready. Then God speaks separately to those who preach and teach and lead and says, show them who I am. Oh, y'all quiet. Don't show them what you have, what you possess. Show them me. Lord, I wish I had a healthy church. Show them the blueprint of what I did for you. Then it's then it's in their own hands to believe it or deny it. If they believe it, I'll ditto what I did. If they deny it, they will have to work hard on their own to get it. But if they can rejoice for how I did it for you, tell them I can do the same thing for them. Old school song says, Lord, do it. Do it for me. That's, that's old. That's, that's old. Take up the Ark of the Covenant. Pass over before the people. Which means don't ask them to do what you won't do. You do it first. Don't pray for my healing and you don't believe for yours. Don't pray for me a house and you ain't got one. The order for the day, y'all ain't talking, is whatever you ask other people to do, you better do it first. I got help in the back. It ain't from the visitor, but it's from the lady next to the visitor. The visitor's from Daytona. Take up the Ark of the Covenant, pass over before the people. They took up God. That's the Ark of the Covenant. They took up God and went before the people. Then the Lord said to Joshua, first he said to his elders, bishops, deacons, those in leadership position, show people God. Then he went to the leader who gave them their positions and told him, this day I will begin, it begins in August, to magnify thee, which means once they recognize who the leader is, that they may know that as I was with Hall, so shall I be with thee. As I was with Moses. You don't serve Moses. You serve here at Shabbat. As I am with whoever the leader is. When it was Dr. Mixon, as I am with Mixon. Some of you can't get blessed because you don't like the leadership. 
And what you're basically telling God is he made the wrong choice. When he made the right choice, but the wrong choice for you. God never makes mistakes. God never. Will you tell somebody that and put some swag on it, put some passion on it? God never. The mistake made is you couldn't submit to his choice. And most of the time, that's not a demon. That's based upon the household you were raised in. You took no orders there. You came and went as you chose. You kept the TV on all night. You didn't clean up behind yourself. You never had a father. So if a person screams at you in a masculine way versus a feminine way, you think they trying to throw off on you. You were missing things in your home and now you want to find it here. I am ecstatic now that I'm older. I am grateful, and I want to talk to loud mouths, that I grew up in a home full of rebuke. I am grateful, y'all ain't got to clap, that I got beatings and whoopings and punishments and had to say sorry and do you love me? Stop crying, get to the table, let's eat. I'm so glad for all of those experiences. And if you took them right where you lived, you could take it right where you are. But if you regretted it in your home and couldn't wait to get old to move, that's why you move in kingdom too fast. You can stay nowhere where people actually care because you don't know what care looks like. If I got three honest people, just admit to yourself, that's me. That's Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Because everyone that complained after the Red Sea died. They didn't die from a disease. They died from complaint. Your biggest disease is your mouth. I wish that death and life is right there. Death and life. Some of you didn't die from the disease. The disease was just the opening. The infirmity, the affliction was telling you something's wrong with you. Yeah. Fix it with your mouth. People gather quicker to talk about trash than they do treasure, but let's move on. If every conversation is about healthiness, they don't want to talk to you. But if you got some gossip, some rumors, they'd be like, what you say? It can be people that don't even know you. I'm sorry, I wasn't being nosy, but I overheard you say something. What? Why we don't tip in when we're talking about salvation and being delivered? And why don't po folks say, excuse me, how do I get delivered? Why they don't cut in when you say, I've been married 35 years and I'm happy. Oh, how did you be happily married? But once they get a divorce, and what happened? He cheated, huh? How come you can get into a negative conversation and avoid healthy dialogue? You gravitate to what your spirit is. So if you are drawn to negative conversations, it's because you have a negative spirit. I think I left off by saying I'm glad that the thing I regretted now is the reason why I'm blessed. And that's the way I was raised. You didn't have to hit me that hard. No, I, I think you did. See, only three of you will jump on this and you'll start being debt free. If you ever heard that a hard head makes a soft behind. Or you gonna lay in the bed that you make, you make your bed hard, you lay in it. Stop asking God to always get you out of what you got yourself into.
the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses. Are y'all actually reading with me? So I will be with thee. Let me say this to Elder Troy White so he can have some more arsenal for his biblical uh, uh, teachings in the future. And to three of you in here that will catch it. God took Moses. Moses missed going into the promised land. Because he let the people make him too emotional. Y'all almost got me there. Certain members who my heart are into, who I give my life for. Y'all almost made Dr. Hall become ice. You almost did it. And instead of me walking mentally in leadership, I was walking in relationship. You follow? And sometimes people can break what God chose you to do by penetrating who you have been for them. See, you... You not their real mother, but you stood in the place of a mother. Then you got the nerve to say, you ain't my mother after you took all the clothes, all the cars, all the things. See, this could be detrimental to your leadership abilities. See, I'm trying to give you history. Because Moses never made it in. Because when he saw the way the people were acting and behaving, he smoked the rock instead of speaking to it. Then God called him back upstairs and said, you cannot go back down. Why? Because they have broken you. They broke you. You can't lead who can make you bleed. Will you tell somebody that you cannot lead? You can only lead with tough skin, but you don't have to be a tough person. Oh, y'all are not learning. You ain't got to be hard, because most folk that act hard are soft. Most folk that talk trash can't fight. You just got to be who you are. And God replaced Moses, Bishop, with Joshua. Joshua's resume is written only one way in the Bible. And if anyone jumps, I know you're learning. Joshua only did one thing well, and that was he fought. He took orders because he was in the military. Oh, yeah. That's all Joshua did. Was when he followed Moses, he protected him. He didn't want to preach. He didn't want to lead. Y'all ain't talking. He didn't want to be a prophet. All he wanted to do was make sure nothing touches my leader Moses. That's the same job Peter had with Jesus. They came to take him away. He cut a man's ear off. There was no demon. Y'all don't hear me. There was no evil spirit. But some of you don't love God enough to do what you're really able to do. I think I'm helping five. I don't know who they are, though. If you can bring me anything that a person said and repeat it all, you didn't stop them no time during the conversation. That's why I don't trust some people, because they can tell me what everybody's saying negative, but they ain't reached that person. They didn't try to smooth it out. You ain't got to fight, but you can try to solve the issue. You can, some of you are not, you, you're just not, you're just not good. Definitely not good for leadership. Now listen to me. Listen to me. He used Joshua because Joshua was a part of the military. Joshua sanctified himself. You're saying, Bishop, we are with you. At least 30 of you are saying it. When did Joshua sanctify himself? See, the Pentecostal church done messed that word up. I'm sanctified. No, no. That means set apart for the Lord's use. 
that don't mean clean, living, holy, and right. That's called holiness. See, you don't want me to see. There's a difference in holiness and sanctification. And the Bible says for you to get the holiness, you must first sanctify yourself. And if a man sanctify himself, the very God of peace will sanctify him holy. Oh, yeah. So you can't even get to real holiness or wholesomeness until you sanctify yourself. God does not sanctify you. You must begin the process of sanctification. If I'm helping anyone, wave at me. Don't look at a person. Look up here. Don't look across the room. Look right here. Now, associate pastor, you've got to catch this. You've got to learn it. It will enhance your preaching abilities, and it will increase your skill sets. Joshua was in the military, and when we're talking about where did he sanctify himself, and when Moses went to the top of the mountain to meet God, it says Joshua separated from the people and climbed halfway. He never tried to get on his leader's level. But he didn't stay where gossip was. You follow me? Oh, it got quiet all over again. He refused the conversation of those who were living at the bottom. But did not try to say he could hear God like his leader could at the top. The Bible said he hid himself in the cleft of the rock. And two of you are guilty in here because you gossip with our present and our past. And God going to get you. He going to get you good too. I never wanted to be on the level of my bishop. Because I enjoy God getting him for not helping me. See, y'all see it different. I'd be like, Lord, I don't know. You need to talk to Bishop Hall because I don't know why. He ain't told me nothing about that. See, it's better when you're not the responsible party. You can get a penalty, but you don't have to get a punishment. Okay, I'm going to leave this. What you need is to be submitted to somebody who God has placed over you so that you can remind God, I can only live based upon what my leader teaches me. A child is smart. If they ask the father, can I go out? And he say no. That child is smart enough to wait for the father to leave. Then he goes to the mother. Mom, can I go out? This is a smart child. The mama who loves him will say, go on, but be back in before five. But the mama who knows the father will be, what did your father say? And the question is, you don't just blame leadership. What did the father say? And if God sent you here, who gave you the right to go out and play? What are we in church for? This is not a playground. This is a place of discipline. A place to better ourselves. This is not a daycare center or an amusement park. This is a place where you have to be like a chiropractor aligned back into proper order. And sometimes it hurts, but after it hurts, you be like, oh, I feel better. You've got to make it through the season of hurt. Surgery hurts. Labor, pregnancy labor hurts working out if it's done correctly the next day hurt let me say it in a worldly song no pain I knew y'all weren't saved let's go back to the Bible oh somebody look at me I am never friends with the friend of my enemy if my friend has an enemy they don't have to do anything wrong to me, but I'm not going to hurt my relationship talking to them. All right, y'all going to make, let me help you old folk that's playing two sides of this fence. 
And I know you all. Because you comment nice things on their bad reports about our church. You shouldn't even be on there. When the word that's online is not the word in the pew, you should not be there because you will digest it. I can love you, but when you don't love my purpose, I can't talk to you. I don't care that we get along. Once you don't love what God has called me to do, we cannot talk. Now, some of you are older and you ain't learned this in all your ages, right? That's bad. My leader's dead. My leader is resting. Y'all say R I H R I P, resting in peace, resting in heaven. And if someone right now says something negative to me about my dead leader, it's on and popping. You just can't. And if I'm talking about defending the dead, what should you do if God has blessed your leader to be living? My mama was an alcoholic, but if you said it to me in my face, it's on and popping, even though it's the truth. You don't have the right to talk about what you're not connected to. It's not about whether you're telling the truth or not. It's whether you have the right to say anything at all. Now, all these folks that say they're from the street, why are you more loyal out there than you are within the house of God? Because everybody in the church came from the block. You can't stand church. We from the block, everybody from the world. So how you can't stand in here when all of us got in here from being out there? I like how you try to make the church a different entity. I like that foul excuse. Hate church. We should have stayed in the world. The church is full of the folk from the world. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? We got cussing saints, we got drinking saints, we got angry saints, got nasty mouth saints. That's all come from the world. You came in here from the world. My last scriptures, then I need 10 minutes to read. Peruse down to verse 17, I mean verse 9, and we're going to read from 9 through 17. Then I'm going to highlight some extremely exciting moments that will cause some of you to increase in your faith to the place where you're going to know the next move to make for yourselves. Everyone's going to make a different move, but we're going to move. Look at somebody and tell them, your move may not be my move, but I'm about to make a move. Talk to that person. Tell them, I've been stagnant long enough. I've been dormant long enough. I've been lackadaisical long enough. I've been borderline lazy long enough. I've been depressed long enough. I've been deprived long enough. I've been suicidal long enough. I've been everything that you are on this side of the Jordan, you've been that long enough. Joshua 9, chapter 3, verse 9 through 17. Joshua said unto the children of Israel, come hither. I'm telling y'all to come hither. And hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua Hall, I'm going to be uh, going back. Uh, Hall said, hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you. And that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, y'all need to, the Perizzites, the Gergesites, the Amorites, 
the Jebusites and everybody that ain't right. Verse 11, behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. Now, therefore, take you 12 men which out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe, take a man. I wish I had women talking. It shall come to pass as soon as the souls of your of the feet, not of the people, of the priests that are reflecting who God is. I, I, I thought I could teach. Don't follow any leader without a reflection of who God is. Look at your neighbor, give him some strength. Tell him if God can't do it, it just can't be done. Now tell the same neighbor, the only way I know God can do it is I need to see somebody else do it. Reason why Peter thought he could walk on water and ask who is he saw God do it. If I see anybody succeed, I have no excuse not to. I've seen people in the Olympics with no legs, but they're competing. Oh, y'all don't hear me. No limbs have prosthesis and still running. You got two legs, hips, and everything. What's your excuse? Verse 12. Now therefore take you twelve men, and from that tribe take a man. It shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, or reflect the image of God, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan. Which means God is about to get into what you must go through. All right, I'm going to say it again. Thank you. He spoke to me. Stay here. God will not put you in what he don't test first. The Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan. That the waters of Jordan might be cut off from the waters that come down from above. Uh oh. And they shall stand upon a heap. I'm not going to preach this here. It shall come to pass when the people remove from their tents to pass over Jordan. Look at somebody and tell them, get over it. Because y'all forgot, I told you now. The priest bearing the ark of the covenant before the people, verse 15, and as they that bear the ark will come unto the Jordan, and the feet of the priest that bear the ark were dipped. In the brim of the water, the Jordan overfloweth all its banks all the time of harvest. Which meant this is not supposed to happen because right now it's overflowing. Some of you just don't have trouble. You got overflowing trouble. Once you finish one thing, something else pop up. Get over that, something else pop up. It's like all the waters are flowing at one time in your direction. Which side can I get some strength from? The waters which came down from above stood, verse 16, rose up upon a heap very far from the city of Adam, Adam then beside Zarathin, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, fell and were cut off, which meant everything was coming at them at one time, and God didn't stop it from coming. He stopped it from reaching. All right, it's quiet. God ain't going to stop nobody. He's just going to stop them from getting to you. God ain't stopping nobody. 
it was, it was time for all the water to flood. But God said, stop right there. Keep flowing. Stop right there. Keep flowing. Stop right there. Keep flowing. God ain't stopping nothing for us, but he's stopping it from getting to us. Broke is flowing in so many directions for people in the United States of America. Y'all think broke is different in the church than it is in the world. It's only different for, for one person who scream when you got your feet in it. Some of y'all talking, I'm broke, where's God? Where's your feet? Oh, let me change that and remind you for a screamer, where's your steps? You want God to just bless you and you ain't took no steps. You waiting for the lights to come on, it to stop raining. You afraid to make moves in the dark. I ain't going after it until I know I can pay it off. You're not actually paying it off. God gave you the ability to have a job and gave you a brain to know how to navigate with resources. But what happens if you get paralyzed from your head down? What you gonna be talking about then, money? You can't move, cripple. Paraplegic. What you gonna rely on now? When Jesus is my portion, I can get a constant friend. Come on, y'all. Is he? His eyes are on the sparrow. So I know he watches me. So I sing because I'm happy. Not because I'm paid, I sing because I'm free, not debt free. His eyes are on the sparrow. I'm getting loud because I know he's watching me. Then sings my soul, my savior. Come on, Shabbat. God to thee. How? Now, once you keep letting folks see God's reflection in your mouth and in your steps, God's going to step into your Jordan. Y'all ain't talking. And he's going to tell Jordan, I got somebody who's supposed to drown in this. Instead of drown, make a way for them to get through this. Some of us should drown in what we in. Instead of drowning, God's dividing that situation. Open up to them. Make sure they get over this. Look at your name and tell them, get over it, even if your it is me. Tell them, get over me. Some people departed from us because they couldn't get over some of you. They couldn't get over you. It's hard to stay where people hold your emotions because they are too fragile. I know some of you ain't never leaving, but you that ain't even leaving got bad dispositions. Even when I rebuke you, you roll your eyes. You try to respect me, but something wrong with your spirit. You're nasty. When I put you on blast, it's not because you're always wrong. It's to show others how disciplined you are to take it. You are not a good representation of what leadership looks like. If I can't use you as an example, you shouldn't be used at all. What I let you get away with, they'll be doing it for the rest of their life. Bishop, be called my name, I ain't did nothing. You don't have to do anything. My father would get on me to put fear in my other siblings.
I know I'm anointed. Well, why are you so fragile? I know I'm chosen. Then why are you so emotional? You can't be chosen. There's no scripture for you. Every time he chose people, especially prophets, he wrote these words. And the first person to jump up who understand it, may God pay your debts. He said, fear not, be of good courage, be not afraid of their faces. And some of you stood up and you who I'm talking about, you ain't strong, you ain't got no courage. You're weak. You respond too easy to foolishness. Stop doing what your parents did in the 70s, standing up for everything, acting like you want to be exempt from the truth. Ask God to make you better. Ask God, make me stronger. Lord, take some of this stuff out of me. I'm tired of being the devil's vessel for the mistakes and the excuses others make. Lord, sanctify me. Separate me. That I might be an example, not an executioner. Let me go back. Thirty minutes. I'm gonna let y'all go now. It's my favorite day, and I promise to help you out of something. And I'm a man of my word. Verse 17, the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, here we go. This is what I need preachers to do, elders, deacons, stand firm. Get in something and stay there long enough until people see your posture don't change and your behavior does not change. Praise God in the midst of the mud, if it's mud. Y'all ain't talking. Praise God in the midst of a drowning situation. Be an example in posture for someone else who's facing the same thing or has to go through it after you come out of it. The way they know God can is you must. That's when a real parent slaps their daughter who's made them a grandparent because the daughter gets grown and say, you raised me like that, but don't tell me how to raise my kids. Slap. See, because now you have insulted who's been there. See, you don't want your future to slap you back into the past. It's very important Oh, y'all, that y'all don't recognize that when you don't deserve to go further, the future will slap you back into yesterday. Then it's your thing to worry, how did I get back to here again? You know how you got there. The priest that bared the Ark of the Covenant, the Bible said, stood firm on dry ground. Look what it says, in the midst of the Jordan. I'm in it, but I'm firm. I'm in it, but I'm on my own two feet. I'm in it, and I don't know if these waters will come crashing down on me in five minutes. I'm trusting God all the way. Oh, y'all ain't tough. And some of y'all want to get out because you're getting scared of the environment. Stay right there. Let me talk to talk. Stand still and see. All right, I just want to help you. You got to stay in it even if you're uncomfortable. Stand firm. Let me give you a song because you ain't happy. On Christ. In the midst of the Jordan and all the Israelites, look at this, I'm closing this part, passed over on dry ground and the priests stayed in it until all the people passed, not over, clean over. Jordan.
I'm going to give you this, but this is Sunday, but I'm going to give you this now if two people help me get excited. And that is, the Lord has asked some of you voluntarily, stay in it until someone can get over it. I know you want to go further. I know you ain't did wrong to nobody, but just stay there because I want you to. Don't get out because you can. Don't fight because you can. Just do this for me. Stay in it. Some of you are going to become greatly successful, especially if you jump and clap for real and praise on this. Some of you, God's about to supernaturally bless because you stayed in the thing longer than you should, but it was all to the glory of God. Had nothing to do with you. If it was about pastoring a big church, I could call a bishop and be appointed. I don't have to be in this hood with y'all. The same choice you have, I got that same option too. Except you're going to have to find another church, but I'm not going to have to find, it's found me. It's going to come with a salary. It's going to come with health insurance. But I'm here because God say, stand in it. Why? Because I'm sending you a group of members who've had a hard life. They were not treated right when they weren't in church. And I need all of them to follow you. Lord, no, give me some suburban, some elite, rich basketball players. Give me some wealthy for I'm giving you who I'm giving you. And I want you to show them what a, sta a firm stance looks like. And you don't come out of there until they all cross over. Clean crop. You ain't coming out with no mud on your shoes. No stench. All right. We're still talking about faith. I've got my, I only have 13 minutes left, so I won't finish it. We're still talking about faith. We're also calling this prophetically, help me get over this. We're still talking about order my steps. But here's the teaching part that I'm about to give you for the next 12 minutes and one person scream. I want to talk about faith being accommodated by fear. Faith. All right, I didn't get help. Y'all thought I wasn't going to teach, right? Faith being accommodated. You can interchange the word escorted by fear. Now, your conversation should be based upon your degree you claimed you had. Let me read this and let y'all go. There is something that must be said about people of faith. People of the faith. That's what we used to call it, the faith. Talk to me quickly. And people that have faith. No matter who is learning how to exercise faith in God, with faith, there is an element of fear associated with it. Thank you for the healthy claps. The reason why fear comes along with faith is because we are now operating in the realm of the unknown. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I am. I don't know how I'm going to make it. How am I going to ever pay all these bills? You are now walking, y'all don't hear me, by faith in the realm of the unknown. Walking in the realm of the unknown is not normal. Most people in the world know what job they're going to have. Then they build their life around their salary and they know what their responsibilities are. They learn how to live within their means. But what is not normal about church folk is God gives us a desire for things we can't afford. 
He makes us not be happy where we are. He tells us make a move before you get a six-figure job. And he tells you if I open the door, don't worry about how long the door is going to be open. We live under a different set of guidelines. Let me talk to talkers because these hands don't help me. The steps of a good man. Hey, come on, Justin. They are ordered by the Lord. And the Lord delighteth in his ways. God smiles at everybody taking a walk in the dark in his name. That's how God built a friendship with Abram. He said, Abraham, my friend. Why are we friends? Because every time I ask you to do something, you do it without question. Questions slow down your progress. Especially when you're asking the questions because you don't want to do what you're commanded to do. I'm not talking to the older saints no more because they've been nodding their head at me all night. That's why the children don't know how to say amen because you don't know how to say it no more. The mind, I'm about to leave you, the mind handles the unknown in a way that if you're not taught properly, you are stuck in a fantasy waiting on God to do what he's not going to do. God said, I don't join in nothing that ain't moving. And for three folk who scream, sometimes moving is not moving at all. Moving is not moving because you see moves you can make, but God said, that ain't the way I want you to take. So he says, stand still. We're not talking about lazy folk. We're talking about folk that have options and alternatives, but they're waiting the long way to get what they could actually probably get in a week. But that thing you get in a week might kill you in the next week. God says, the only thing killing some of you is faith says, do it the way that you're scared of. Oh, yeah. Do it the way that you're scared of. Not the way your hustle taught you. Not the way your big pimping taught you. Not the way your sugar daddy methods taught you. Not the way... A lot of you laughing because that's the way you got where you are. That's really the way. You legalized it later, but you played the game to get halfway there. Ain't no faith brought you there. God's forgiveness of your wrong way of getting halfway is what got you there. You ain't got no real testimony. You got a survival. Testimony is for those who made it through the test. They didn't cheat. They ain't have no cheat sheet. Listen to me closely, Dr. Mixon, because I really want you to grasp this. The mind handles the unknown in a way that if you're not taught properly, you are stuck fantasizing, waiting on God to do something he's just not going to do. It's not going to happen because God does not like the path that you're taking or the steps that you're making. Let me talk to talkers because I got to go in six minutes. Being able to see our way through something or partially seeing a way is easier than taking a path that you've never taken before. Faith is a walk in the dark and a journey into the unknown to an extent. Let me go deeper. I'm going to see Dr. Trace him. Some people will need to see someone else stand in a situation that they are in and see that person survive it in order for them to have a blueprint on how good God actually is. Some of you are in what you're in because you are a detox to fear. All right, I am. I'm so sorry that associate pastor had to go or not inside the building. Some of you are simply God's detox from fear to those that have faith, but not enough faith to cross over. Yeah. 
And for those who jump and scream on this, God has blessed you. Detox comes with mess. It's a cleanser, but to those that have to watch you. This ministry is going through a season of detox. And we have to let it happen before we elevate. You don't make a mess at the top. Make the mess at the bottom. Make the mess while going through, not after you get to. If you stood up and not talking, I must not be your pastor. Because we got a rule. Don't stand up if you ain't going to speak up. Who you been hanging around? Don't visit dead churches, then bring that dead spirit over here. This is a different church. Some of us are in what we are in to become a detox from fear to those who actually have faith, but not enough faith to cross over. Let me give an example for one screamer who know you're going to be blessed. When your baby first starts walking, they don't have enough to walk all the way to you. They'll take two steps and then start crawling. You got to pick them back up. Come on. And you got to separate yourself from the crawling child. And it's the love and them wanting to please who's calling them that makes them get back up. Some of y'all don't love God enough to stop. You want somebody to hold your hand. Come on. The baby is now relying balance on your strength. You have not done enough historical contextual or contextual study to understand this. And I know you're going to preach it, but you better tell them where you got it or I'm going to blow your online thing up. You hear me? Y'all listen to me right now. Because you can get inspired by me, but if you can't follow me, that's stealing. And what I just did to Raheem, if he looked funny, that means he ain't strong enough to be a leader either. Now, let me say to all of you, what you don't know is when we're born as infants, infants get into a lot of trouble. Not that they have a spirit, they are curious. So if they see you drinking out of a cup, the infant wants to hold the cup. And they cry over something that could actually suffocate them. Oh yeah, if they see you driving, they want to sit in the driver's seat. If you let them drive, they will kill themselves and you. Y'all still ain't talking. But what you don't know through studying is the reason why God created infants in the structure with certain bone structures was for them to fall enough until their bones get strong. They got to cry enough until their lungs expand. Some of you think the hurt is a demon and that crying is a devil. God said, I'm trying to expand you. I'm trying to get you ready to stand on your own two feet. This is the process how to go from infancy to adolescency to adulthood. Though a just man fall, he gets back up. Though he falls seven times. And you're letting people discourage you by talking about how many times you fail. Let them talk. How many times you fall. Let them talk. Your job is to cross over. Get up. Get over it. Stay focused. Hope. Let me get out. Because that was a preach key. No, sir. No. No. Not happening. Not happening. Get over it. Oh, no, I'm going to hold it because Sunday is right around the corner. Get over it. 
Yes, it hurts. Yes. It makes you vindictive. It makes you want to go back to being the person that it took you years to get away from. Let me talk the talk, but you gotta learn how to hold your peace. And let the Lord. Good God Almighty. Let me read this last thing. This is it. Even though I got a whole thing of notes. Let me. No, no, I don't want to take my time and I don't want to take your time. But let me read this. But remember the most important statement I made for me tonight is some of you are going to stay in what you're in because God is using you as a detox. And people who are not spiritual see mess as being messy instead of mess as being delivered. When you detox and do a real cleansing, you can't go outside right after that. Oh, y'all got quiet. Tell me, I don't feel nothing yet. By the time you out there, be like, oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. You got to excuse yourself from a meeting. You look embarrassed. Then you go into the lavatory and all the stalls taken. Hurry, please, somebody. Or if you ever been like me, you use a bathroom that you ain't supposed to use. I'd be like, watch the doors. Anybody in there? Because it becomes urgent. See, y'all going to make me look stupid. But if a leader can confess, I know. Because what a detox cleanse does is it doesn't wait on time to get it out of you. It says it's been in you too long. So you're in a season where God said, I want to speed up your prophecy, but I got to speed up your cleansing. Y'all ain't talking. I cannot give all of this to you while you still releasing. All right, let me get out. We're in the process. The ministry, the entire ministry is in a detoxification. Now a few of you caught it in the spirit. Now that makes sense. You should have not been talking to it. You are what you eat. You eat corn, you're going to see corn when it pass. See how quiet it got? You eat beets, you're going to see beets when it leaves. When I ate beets, I thought I need to see a doctor because I thought I was bleeding hemorrhaging. See, some of you like turning your head away from this kind of conversation. That's how you ignore the mess that's in the church too. You are not a detox. I'm trying to prove to you through teaching, which is Wednesday, that you can actually tell what somebody ate through what they release. Because certain things are not digestible. This statement, and let's close, and then next Wednesday I'll pick up on this. But on Sunday I'm going to re-preach Joshua because I feel like preaching it. Here's my closing statement. Faith and fear are companions, even though they're opposites. For those who would talk to me that's educated, that got your associates or bastards, as you said, masters and above, opposites attract. So you don't know you have faith until you get out of what you fear. See, you got to get over what you fear. What led you over what you fear? Faith. Oh, y'all still quiet. 
Faith is basically a him or her. Fear, I'm not going to tell you which one is a him or her. So when fear takes over you, faith has to tell you what it knows about fear. You can't tell faith what you know about fear because fear is faith's companion. You cannot tell faith, help me out of this. Faith said you're in it because of me. I told fear, get you. And I told fear, keep you till they call for me. Y'all ain't talking. Once they call for me, faith holds a meeting with fear and says, you've done your job. Get out the way and let them cross over. Tell your neighbor, get over it, even if it is me. Right here we close, Tannis. Thank you for pushing me. What are the dynamics as how to cohabitate? How they cohabitate and assist one another is doubt and faith. Doubt is a twin of fear. You either suppose to fear and doubt or fear and get over it. Okay. Doubt and faith have a complex relationship. Okay. Like save women dating thugs. Holy Ghost filled tongue speaking women wanting Urkel over Stefan. Doubt and faith are often seen as opposing forces, yet they are intricately intertwined in the human experience. We're closing it. Look at me. The role of doubt in faith. Rather than being a threat to faith, doubt can actually strengthen it. Doubt makes you have a deeper relationship with faith by making you ask honest questions. Oh, so now you go to someone and tell them, I doubt God can do this, but whoever you're confessing it to, you're hoping they have the answer to help you get over that situation. All right, and here nobody. People who are smart don't take their issues to dumb people. They ask questions of somebody who they feel overcame what they're talking about. They may not ever ask you for help, but in the question, you hear them asking for help. Even in phone calls, I didn't really want nothing but just calling you. It's one in the morning. You want something. It's one in the morning. You want to say hi to me at one in the Why? Two, doubt's role with faith, it commands spiritual growth. Confronting doubts can foster personal growth and resilience. Which means God is going to let the thing stay in front of you and give you no route out but forward. Now you have the decision, do I just die right here or do I speak to what's in front of me? And tell it, you better get out my face. And ye shall say to this mouth. All right, I can't get no bound. Be thou removed. Spiritual growth. And then the last is, you have to build a community when you have a lot of doubt. Doubt is trying to choose new friends. You doubt because nothing happened that God promised you because he didn't like the friends you were with. So doubt was employed by faith to make you start doubting everyone around you. Or to start talking again back to him. Take this home with you. Take this home with you, Bridget. Take this home with you, Elder Ferguson. Take this home with y'all. 
This is where we'll pick up next week. Take it home with you. Now, I must say, being that I have sat, sat in many classes and taken many courses, I'm going to give the church today a C because most of you are not going to remember a darn thing I said tonight. Nor will you use it tomorrow. But you will do a hashtag. Our brains, touch somebody and tell them, our brains. brains. Here we go, catch this, Dr. Troy. Our brains is wired to reduce uncertainty. I'm not going to explain it, I'm reading it. The unknown, which is the uncertainty, is synonymous with threats that pose risk to our survival. So if our brain does not see a way out, it starts freaking out and it goes to creating exits without consulting God oh, yeah. the brain is not wired to stay in a place of uncertainty It's going to think too fast and make a way out that God has nothing to do with. The more we know, the more we can make accurate de decisions and shape our future. The path forward feels more dangerous when we can sense essential gaps in our knowledge. Which means I only know enough to get this far. Now I stopped for two years because I don't know the next move to make. Those gaps is where you should have been consulting God. Instead, you took yourself as far as you could go. And when you couldn't go any further, you began to freak out. And doubt chose the wrong friends. Doubt chose the wrong conversations. Doubt chose boyfriends, girlfriends, shacking, who to live with. Doubt said, go dance for one weekend as a stripper, make $1,500 and at least pay your bills, but go to a country town with all white boys and hicks that be, come on, baby. Doubt can teach you a fast lesson that wisdom won't talk to you as fast. Wisdom says, where's your faith? Now, I brought up the stripping thing. Nobody say nothing because three of you in here have been thinking about it. Won't say who you are, but at least you know that I know. And two of you are the deepest speaking in tongues. He could shun the people we got in this church. At least you know that I know. Don't my Lord Jesus, you heard me. God will not give you a leader that can't see. And I'm not dogging you for it. But stop acting like you got faith and admit right now I need a whole nother level of detox. Because right now my unknown uncertain life is bringing thoughts to me that I should not be entertaining. Why is my mind thinking like this? My mind keep telling me no, no, no. Y'all ain't saved one bit. Right here, let's stand after this. In fact, Elder Curry, fear of the unknown has been theorized to be one fear to rule them all. Hear what I'm saying? One fear to rule them all, because y'all been to school. The fear that gives rises to all other fears. Fear keeps on duplicating itself. So it goes from fear that this is a lump on my breast is cancer to fear, what if I have to lose my breast? To fear, what if I only have three months? Fear just keeps growing. Fear, lost my job. Now I got to pay my rent by the end of the month. Fear, if I don't pay my rent, who am I going to live? See, fear creates another path. 
you start thinking going back, I gotta go back to my mama, I need to date my boyfriend, I need to go out to eat, I need to ask him for a thousand dollars, but I know he's gonna want me to sleep with him. Fear gives you a, a weird path to getting the same answer that you would get if you got over fear. All right, all right. Unfamiliar spaces and potential blind spots make everyone uncomfortable. If you are driving your car on I-4 and you look through your mirrors and by chance you literally put on your blinker and somebody turns in front of you that didn't see you, you swerve the car back in line and now you start looking everywhere for the rest of the ride because fear has taken over your drive. Let me blame you and see if somebody told me, have you ever almost went into somebody else's lane because you didn't see them in your rear view? Y'all ain't talking. That's because you can't see everything. You can't drive and look. And once you were almost killed or hit, your child in the car seat, you slow down. And now you look at rear views at least three times before you pull over. You also, for talkers, back off the car that almost hit you. And you say, let them go. So you gotta let certain people, let them go. Slow down. Stay in your lane. Y'all ain't talking. Slow down. Better to get there and safe. Better to get there safe than to not get there at all. Everyone standing. Everyone standing. Normally, the white church would be clapping for me and say, we enjoy. No, 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 no. Y'all keep that foolishness. No, no. And put it online. These uncircumcised Philistines called my church. Let them see how y'all treat me online. No, no. I already know it was good. But after opera, Negroes clap. You can make folk feel undeserving when the response does not match the performance. And black people are famous for this. But you die, you want a free funeral. You want your baby Christian for free. You want free marriage counseling. Visit me at the hospital for free. How about we just FaceTime you and say hello? I'm leaving, I can't believe he didn't visit me. Uh, when you here, you ain't here. See, I'm not insulted, I'm showing you how quick it is for a leader to not be able to get into the promised land because their hearts are too attached to the people whose hearts are not attached to the leader. You see the difference? It's called reciprocation. I saw your post. You claim you didn't want any pity. No one's going to give it to you, but you posted it. You're going to need more faith. You say, I don't need pity. I'm going to be okay. That ain't promised. I know a lot of people highly anointed who have what you have and had faith and died while having it. You don't get it till you make it known to people with power who can pray for you. You don't have the power to pray for yourself. You don't have it. The situation keeps escalating, keeps returning. That's God trying to tell you, put faith in somebody. 
It said, pray ye one for another, not for yourself. And that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. You posted this so it's public. Raheem has a bad case of cancer. Got to go back to taking pills on chemo. You wrote it, so this is public. Not time for a young man like that to die. Man with a heart for people, has a church, has children. Not time for that boy to go out like, and I'm telling you, I ain't doing your funeral. So you better live. Because I am not doing your funeral. Now that's when y'all go to bed tonight and before you go to bed, you become a detox. The Bible said, according to your faith, not prayers, not your desire, not your emotion, according to your faith. And the Baruch Bikisile Konda. I'm okay. Who you should be asking to literally lay hands on you is the one that survived stage four cancer. Because that's your detox. Not folk who eat a little, little, little. That don't heal nobody. Holy oil don't heal nobody. No, no, you got to get with who God did it for and ask for a transfer. And you're a member of the same ministry in the same church that served the same God. You ought to tell God, hold on. You brought her to preach. You paid for her to preach. Why, you got cancer? No, y'all need, no, no, you need to ask her, uh, what happened? Some of you will never get healed because you won't talk to the person in it that has to stay in it to help you get over it. Y'all gotta stop. They're holding a spot for you. Do you all believe this? Now that sound harsh, but it wasn't because now you've been activated to pray because you didn't even know that he had it. Why? Because it was silent to you. Because everybody ain't online. Everybody ain't on no. Man, this ain't no online ministry. You need help. You got to ask for it. I believe everything I've been through that actually was not my fault was my fate. Because you can't get people over something that you've not been in. I've learned it now. Dr. Tracy... I'm now in my 60s. I'm just learning it. That Todd, you went through all of this from 20 to your 60s for the people that God was going to assign you to. I was looking for the right then answer when it was a later on answer. That's from divorce to a child out of wedlock to this, that, and the other. If I overcame it, and your oil drips from head down, then that means you have to tell God, do you know who my pastor is? Do you know what church we go to? You've got the right to confront God and be like, you sent me to a ministry sitting under a leader that you done done all this stuff for, and if I'm there, what am I there for? For the transfer. One thing I can teach you is how to trust in God. Can't teach you how to have, have a good marriage yet because I didn't have one. So I, can't, so I can't tell you. I can give you little wisdom keys, but I can't show you that. But the other stuff you're going through, lie, don't cheat, talked about mistreated, abuse, going, talking about show you born, ungrateful children, ungrateful stepchildren, circumcised Philistine. I can give you all that. The only thing I can't help you with is that marriage thing. Y'all got to go to Crystal. 
and ask Crystal how she stay with Maze. You now you don't go to Maze and ask him how he stay with Crystal. You go to Crystal and ask Crystal how she stay with Maze. See, that's the reality. Because normally, the person that stays is normally the female who could have left a long time ago if it was arguing because men are very hardcore. So y'all have to actually put up with parts of us that we don't know you putting up with to even stay there, right? That's real men say amen. That's a fact. Most men ain't got no reason to leave a good woman, but every good woman got a reason to leave a man. If I get married, y'all better ask her. Don't ask me. I ain't, I ain't be able to help you. Because I can't live with myself. I ain't be able to help you. But if she can do it, y'all better run to that person and be like, I, I am dating this man. You need somebody who can stand in your Jordan. On Sunday, I'm preaching Air Jordan. So y'all get ready. Right, and I'm gonna show you where I'm going. Y'all just stay with <laughs> Y'all just stay with me on Sunday. I might even wear my Jordans. This Jordan Sunday. You look cute in them sneakers, but I'm wearing some Jordans on Sunday. All of you that have a good seat, get it, please. And so in a great way, because I don't tell you what to give on midweek, but I appreciate you. You could never really pay for the knowledge that God puts in a man or woman of God. But those that sow into your spirit, you ought to sow into their natural. Come on, let's sow now in Jesus' name. Walk out, look good, look happy. Thank you. Look like you're wealthy. Look like you got it going on. That sound good. Thank you, young adults. I don't call them young people no more. I'm not insulting no more generations. These young adults. Thank you, thank you. She said, good preaching, I'm from Connecticut. Thank you that I got a good amen from Connecticut. Thank you, sir. He said, very good. I'm going to get better and better because now I'm getting over some of the insults and the pain that people have caused. I had to make sure that I don't go to hell trying to take y'all to heaven. See, y'all didn't catch that. I just had to make sure. Yeah, because sometimes you can get lost in trying to help others get found. But I pray for everybody that's been a member, still a member, whether they're here or not, thinking may God lead you to be firm and stand still until his will is done in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Everyone standing. Y'all pray over the offering. You can go. Our executive pastor's coming to send us home with any announcements. I can't wait to see you Friday, but on Sunday morning, it's going down at the sanctuary. Amen? Yeah. I'm going to ask you to do something I don't ask you to do. Bring guests. Bring your friends on this Sunday. Bring me somebody to fill a seat versus someone that you like. Witness for the Lord, amen? And let them get adjusted to your church or let them get scared of it. Either way, invite a soul to the Shabbat church, amen? Let's clap for executive pastor, overseer Sonia Mixon as she comes.